This video is a project of the Annenberg Foundation Trust at Sunnylands. Congratulations, you've just been elected to the Board of Supervisors of San Francisco. In today's, today's world, not 1887. Um, you have a program, a plan. Uh, you've actually campaigned on it. Uh, you're going to put a series of uh, meeting places with gym and classrooms and uh, high tech uh, for the young people in San Francisco to get them off the streets. And you talk to your, uh, your, other, your other colleagues, but you're one vote short. A, another supervisor comes to you and said, uh, I'll vote for your bill if you vote for mine. I want to regulate, I guess you call them nail salons. Uh, I, I see signs all the time, nails. Um, we want to have health inspection, uh, make sure they sterilize their instruments and something, and we're going to have a lot of inspectors. Uh, you think it's a waste of time. Do you give them your vote, trade your vote? I wouldn't do that. Because what? I wouldn't. Legislators don't trade votes. You, they, you think it's unethical? You think it's wrong? They do. Um, um, it, log rolling is... Log roll. Oh yeah, like you scratch my oh, back log, and I log scroll, log. and I scratch yours. It's Does anybody disagree with your colleague? Yeah, I believe uh, that our country was founded on the, the basis of compromise, and so therefore that is a sort of compromise. And therefore, if you if you really want to get your but your colleague said, no, th this is wrong. I, I I won't trade a vote. But I'm. It, it's not. I don't believe it's wrong personally. If why? You, if, why it advances, isn't it wrong? It advances what you believe in, and what do you believe in in this case? You believe in getting the facilities for the kids in San Francisco, and it's going to cost a little more to get the facilities for the kids in San Francisco. You're going to let all those kids go without without the support they need, uh, just because of your ethics. You're not going to vote for the little nail bill. Who cares? Really, you're going to sacrifice the young people of San Francisco for your sense of ethics, which says you'll never trade. I, I, um, there would probably be, I would give it time, because maybe later on, it wouldn't be an immediate thing. So if I, if I would to give it time, maybe later on, these, um, these people would change their minds, and things would probably change. Let me ask you this. Um, if you're a judge on an appellate court, where the, like at the Supreme Court, where we have three or four cases, uh, would you say, well, Justice Kennedy, I'm going to vote with you in the tax case if you'll vote with me in the robbery case? We have a history of compromise in this country. <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe that's slightly different because as why a, is it different? As a judge, you're called on to vote how you interpret the Constitution and how what you believe is correct and. Um, therefore, I feel you're obligated to vote how you feel and not change vote, exchange votes. Uh, it, it is a clear violation, a fundamental violation, a, uh, I think a criminal violation, for a judge to trade his vote. Never. 
It happens in the legislature all the time. Uh, I want you to think about the reasons for that. Um, in part, it's because in the context of cases, we are, as you indicated, sworn to uphold not just the Constitution, but the law, and to do what is, and that's the difference in the case method and the, legis and the legislative method. Let me ask you this. Take the, th the hypothetical of, of trading votes, the nail parlor for the um, regulation for the uh, youth center bill. bill. Um, and as, uh, assume that uh, you're going to trade that vote. You think uh, the end is worth the, mean, worth the means in this case. Uh, that the long term, you, you know, you'd rather not have the stupid nail parlor thing, but you don't uh, want to put the young people in your community at risk, so you'll go with it. Uh, and this hypothetical legislator who made the deal with you said, and that's good because, you know, a lot of these nail parlor outfits are run by a bunch of foreigners and it's time they got pushed around a little bit. Do you trade your vote now? Yes. I'd say I wouldn't be able to trade my vote then because the application of the new legislation is completely unjust in my mindset. So as before... Uh, no, uh, uh, application or purpose? Well, purpose. You haven't seen it applied yet. Right, but in its, when, if it passed, if I voted for it and in its application, the purpose of it is unjust. You think it would be unconstitutional for you to vote? Yes. For the, uh, are you bound by the Constitution? Yes. If you're not a lawyer? Well... And you're not a judge? Yes. Why? It's... I thought constitutions were for lawyers and judges. Well, it's the rule of law. Everybody's under the rule of the Constitution. Listen, everybody, on, the Constitution is yours. Does a legislator who hasn't been to law school have the duty to interpret the Constitution? I, I think they should, yes. Does he, I know you think they should. Does he have a duty to do so? No. Uh, what is the oath that every office holder takes? That they will follow the law? I do, so, I do solemnly I'm swear sorry. to support the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Of course. Does the, does the President of the United States have an obligation to follow, follow the Constitution? Yes. He's not a lawyer? Correct. How does he know what's in it? He has to learn it. How does he learn it? From his schooling and his education. The Constitution is yours. It doesn't belong to a bunch of judges and lawyers. Uh, of course he has the obligation to interpret it, as does every senator, whether or not they're a lawyer. It happens that judges and lawyers have a special language, and through the case function, they, they clarify it, we hope, over time. Yeah. Um, but in, in this case, um, suppose a court found out that the that the supervisor said that. Suppose the supervisor said that, and you, you vote no, but he gets another, enough other votes, and then nail salon thing, whatever they call those things, passes. Um, you're a judge. You've heard about this comment. Do you strike down the ordinance? Can you strike an ordinance because of an improper purpose in its passage. Yes. Can you name me a case? Yikwo versus Hopkins. Uh, was Yikwo a purpose or an application case? I'll, I'll come back to you. I would say that the Yikwo versus Hopkins case would be an application flaw rather than a purpose so flaw. So you, you, you say uh, under Yikwo you can have a statute passed for a bad purpose and there's nothing we can do about it even if the judges know the bad purpose? Yes. If it's Isn't that kind of silly? Well, essentially, though, it would make sense because the nail salon would be to help the people because it would keep it sanitary. So oh, the well, Yick Wo was needed. to help, help the, save the community so the wooden building wouldn't burn down. Yes, so its purpose was fine. It was the application against the Chinese that made it. Are you 100% sure that the purpose was fine? Not 100%, no. Uh, you, let's, let's back up just a minute. And, although I want, I want to stay with this purpose effect. Uh, why were there Chinese in California anyway? 
the United States government opened up Chinese immigrants during the 1848 gold rush, which was in California. And after a lot of Chinese immigrants came to America in California, they just settled and started opening up businesses. And one of the main businesses were the laundry factory. Was there anything other than the gold rush for which the Chinese were really no, the needed? No, tr Transcontinental Railroad, which the is also being built. Where did the Transcontinental Railroad go from? You know, where, where, it you know where there's two, two uh, Chicago points? Chicago was one, I believe. Uh, and another one was California or the Oregon Trail. Do you know what city in California? Sacramento, California. Sacramento. <laughs> um, what, what's between Sacramento, California, and, and Nevada? Incidentally, why was the north? Why was it the south? There's, no, there's, there's a huge mountain range, the Sierra Nevada. Why didn't they just ship it through the south? Because um, maybe in the south there were a lot of Indian reservations that would have had problems. No. Uh, oh, really, on the, on the northern prairies, very, very fierce Indian tribes. That doesn't work. Um, the extreme heat of the south in Desert Valley, <laughs> Death Valley? No, east, east, east. No, you go south of Death Valley. Uh, um, no, in fact, much better climate condition. You don't have the terrible winters. Why was, why, why was the Transcontinental Railroad in the north? Um, do you think uh, if the southern and northern senators uh, had a voice in this, they might have a different opinion as to where it should go? I, I think they might. Was there an event that made the Southern Senators leave the Senate of the United States? Yes, there was the South, the, the Civil War. So the way's War. open for the railroad, and that's why it's in the North. And in order to get to the Sierra Nevadas, uh, they had to chip um, granite, rock. They sometimes made just a foot or so a day. They were racing with the railroad coming from the east. And it was a tough race because the railroad coming from the east had what? How did, how did they supply their people? with the railroad that had already been built, but you couldn't do that in California. You had to bring all this stuff by ship. Plus, you had, had to make just a foot a day in the, in, in, in the mountains. And Chinese laborers would hang down the cliffs on scaffolds, put dynamite sticks in, light them, and get pulled up. It was a very, very dangerous work, almost uh, foolhardy to do it. The Chinese did it. They built the railroad over the Sierras. Uh, so we have a tremendous number uh, of, of, of Chinese in, Calif in, in California, uh, and in, in, this, in this case, they, they had laundries. What would you say? You've heard this, this how about a, a bad purpose. Uh, should a law be declared invalid for a bad purpose? We've heard this remark made by the legislature. Any problem with this? As a matter of what you think a good system is. Uh, you suspect that a law has been passed for an invalid purpose. Uh, you're a judge. Uh, you hear evidence that the, in the hypothetical we had, um, that the, uh, one of the legislators, the sponsor of it, in fact, wanted to push foreigners around. Do you invalidate the law? Are there any problems with invalidating a law because of an improper purpose in its enactment? I would invalidate it. Just. Um you know, based on the motives of the people who passed it, I would invalidate it. Uh, you would tell, uh, and, and you would have that system in our country, I take it. Uh, so you would tell judges that what they do is they look for the reasons that the legislator passed the bill, and if it was for a bad reason, to strike it down? Yeah. And uh, so suppose a lawyer, a, a legislator said, well, I, I, I wanted to trade it for the youth center. It's kind of a stupid law, but I want to trade it for the youth center. It would be a, it'd be a question of morals. How do you, you know, how do you, uh, where, what, what do you value more or for a vote? Uh, and how would you come to that decision? And, and you as a judge decide this. Uh, uh, do, do any of you have some doubts about the proposition your colleague is, is advancing? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I disagree that a law should be struck down because of a bad purpose. If the law is created for a purpose of discrimination, but it's not applied in a discriminatory manner, then there's no reason to strike it down because of its purpose. You would allow a statute that's enacted in order to make life difficult for a racial minority, an ethnic minority, a particular nationality, a particular religion, you would tell the legislators that's perfectly fine. No, in the case in the Yikwo case, 
if the law was created particularly to make life difficult for Chinese immigrants, but if it had been applied equally to all people, the law might have been inconvenient, but it wouldn't have been discriminatory. Oh, so you have a law passed for a bad purpose, but it's applied equally? If it's passed for a bad purpose, but it's not applied in a bad way, then the purpose isn't having an effect and isn't really relevant. How interesting. You would say that a law which was passed because of animosity, dislike, um, even hatred of a racial minority, ought to be able to stand. Suppose I had a study showing um, that in the aftermath of slavery, it's been very difficult uh, for the black people to um, have a real stake in the economic system. Uh, and so I'm going to have a school, um, public school, for just black people. You have to be black in order to go there. But it's a very good school. Void? I think that would be void because it would still be, it's discriminatory in favor of a group that has been disadvantaged. All right, I have two schools, they're both equal. They're both equal. In fact, the black one's probably a little better. Great teachers, swimming pool, basketball court, the whole thing. It's better. I can't have them separate? No. What? Because it's assuming a difference that would merit separation, that black people are different from white people. What's and wrong so with that? And so it's valid to put them in different places. What's wrong with that? Because all people should be treated as equal. What? Our nation was founded when Thomas Jefferson wrote in the Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal. And in the Brown versus Board of Education case, it stated that separate is inherently unequal. What happens to you if I say you must go to a school because of the color of your skin? I'm deprived of diversity. I'm deprived of equality and... But what's wrong with that? It's discrimination. It's what's segregation. What's wrong with discrimination? The problem with discrimination in case of color and race is that you're discriminating based on an immutable characteristic, something you can't control. But if you're discriminating, let's say, an athlete who can't join a professional sport, that's discrimination based on merits on something you do, and that's different. What's the cost of discriminating? Um, you're denied the right to choose. or What's denied wrong with the denying the denied right to choose? In my hypothetical, you get a better deal. Well, when you're denied the right to choose or the right to freedom, like, the government is basically telling you what to do. And What's wrong with what, doesn't the government? Does the government tell you to go 65 miles an hour and no faster? Government always tells you what to do. Yes. The 14th Amendment says that no person should be deprived of life, liberty, or property. And if you are discriminating I'm against someone. why that's in the Constitution. I agree that it's there. Uh, discriminatory laws create a psychological barrier, a stigma, for the person at the advantage and the disadvantage. What does it do to the person who's just told to do something by reason of the color, his or color? It makes them feel skin. that they are, have less worth because does of Does it hurt? Yes. It hurts. It hurts. And that's why uh, Jefferson said what he, what he did. That's why the Constitution says what it says. Uh, that's why the government can do some things and not others. This hurts, and it's a gratuitous hurt, and it's imposed by usually people in the majority who want to hurt people in the minority, and we simply do not allow that. Now, that's the undercurrent of Yikwo versus Hopkins. I think it's pretty dicey business to say we're going to scan the motives of the legislator uh, to determine if the law was, was proper. One, one doesn't care, one flips a coin, one wants to go home, one traded his vote, the other doesn't understand it. Is there a reason it hasn't been done? Does that tell you that maybe the courts are reluctant to do it? And I'm asking why they might be? I think Yikwo helped create a system that helped to look beyond purpose 
and help to look at um, the case itself, how it's being Okay, applied. mark that place in the record. Uh, Yick Wolf starts an important precedent. I want to ask if that makes sense. A any quick answer about the cost to court intervention? It would be a tremendous extension of judicial power. And judges must be very careful about judicial power. They must have only a case in front of them. They must have a, a, a case that's controlled by principles that they understand. And to say that the judges are going to say the motives that are good and the motives that are bad is, 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 a, is a very difficult proposition. Do you really believe that the Board of Supervisors in 1886 uh, were really interested in the, in the fire hazard? Of the, uh, do you really believe that? I believe the law was passed um, to protect San Francisco, San Diego, one of them. <laughs> San, Francisco. San Francisco. Sorry, I'm not good with my cities. But, um, in order to protect the city from fires. It was applied in a discriminatory you really, manner. You really do think, uh, well, let me ask you that. Uh, suppose I, I, I take a poll and a great majority of us said everyone knows that this was passed to uh, make it difficult for the Chinese. In fact, we have proof positive because 80 or so whites supplied and got the license, 200, uh, only, one, only one didn't. 200 Chinese applicants uh, were denied. So we know what the purpose was. We've got proof. We know how the supervisors behave. We know their previous uh, history. We know that this was no good. Why not use that as the basis for striking it down? What was the clause that was, was used to, to strike down uh, the, uh, the Yikwo ordinance? What, what's the clause in the Constitution that we're looking at? The Equal Protection Clause. Uh, what's the Equal Protection Clause say? That the laws must be equal? Um, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection uh, of the, the law. The equal protection of the law. So the laws have to be equal, right? Yes. Um, if I asked you what the court taught you in Yikwo, what would you say? And before you answer that question, think about that. Uh, why, why can Yikwo come to our courts? He's a citizen of China. I mean, how does this work? Yes. What I learned in this case is that um, in the 14th Amendment, it says no state can deprive any person um, of life, liberty, or property, so he can go to court and everything because he's a person, not that he's a the, citizen. The, four, the 14th Amendment says no state shall deprive any person of equal protection of the law. And Yikwo is a person. He has a heart, a mind, a soul, feelings, hopes, aspirations, ambitions, weaknesses, frailties, strengths. He's a person. Um, when I teach in China, which I do occasionally, uh, I bring the Yikwo case with me. And I say that the American courts took a very unpopular stance against an unpopular people, the Chinese, and allowed them to come in their court and made a very important statement of law. Let me ask you this. Well, then I ask you, what's the holding of, of Yikwo? What, what, what's the rule that it teaches? And I think that the Yikwo case teaches people to be fair to other people, and that just because you are a different race, or a different color, or a different age, doesn't mean that you're actually that different. I mean, it doesn't really matter what you look like or how old you are, you can actually be really same to another person. Or you could also be very different, but your color or your race doesn't determine that. Well, and I think uh, I, th I think that's a grand principle. I'm not sure I find that in the cases. I, I don't disagree with what you've said, but I, I think the court was more specific than that. Yes. And I think that equal was Hopkins teaches us like him to, um, to respect the treaty between the Chinese and the America, because um, if we don't respect the Chinese who are here, then um, how the Americans uh, people be treated when they go abroad. 
I think that's, again, the moral principle. I'm looking for something a little less interesting, a little less uh, lofty from a moral standpoint. I want to know what the court told the Board of Supervisors that was, how did the case come up? Where, where is Yik Wo when this case comes up? What's happening to him? He's been arrested. Uh, was it seven days or seventy dollars or ten days and, 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 and ten dollars? Ten days, yeah, it's a dollar a day. Um, why does he get out of jail? Yes. The Supreme Court ruled that um, each person, not just a citizen, is um, due equal protection under the law and due process. Why did he? So, well, we know that from the amendment. Why didn't he get it? Let's assume, because uh, one of your colleagues was about ready to tell me, this law, you know, it's, uh, when you read it, it makes a little sense. Got to have a permit for a laundry, if it's wooden. Well, because he was able to prove that his was safe, and um, it didn't matter that he Why isn't that like proving that you're a good driver when you're 16? Because the white people who were able to prove it, um, they got their permits, but he didn't even though he proved okay, it to Okay, and the so what's the degree. general principle, the gentleman in front of you? The court cannot take the, as long as it's applied equally, the court cannot do anything about it, but it's when it was a, the fact that it was applied unequally to the Chinese and not to the whites, that that's why the court ruled. As he said this law, uh, assuming that it was passed for a legitimate purpose, and I have a big question about um, was applied with an evil eye and an unequal hand, a metaphor that bothers me a little bit. It's kind of a mixed m metaphor. Um, it should have been with an evil eye and a malicious hand, I think, poetically to make it <laughs> the same. Um, but uh, he said it was, it was discriminatory in its application. And he had a a, a, a lot of evidence for that. Um, the number of the, the uh, whites that were given permits, the number of Chinese that were denied, a very strong case. It says that even though the law is valid or neutral, fair on its face, if in application uh, it's, it's being applied in order to hurt a particular race, it's void. That's a tremendously powerful principle, and that's, the, that's why the Yikwo case is cited today, uh, and, and why we're indebted to Yikwo, a Chinese national, wasn't even a citizen of this country, for going to the Supreme Court of the United States and establishing this very important doctrine. 